Tinkers Workshop. Today we're working on another CNC machine. This is the Cell Silva that I built from uh, designed by David Steele. Very great machine. I absolutely love it and you've seen some of the projects on my blog site. And uh, we're going to build another one. The QC Colab Makerspace in Davenport, Iowa, who I'm a member of, uh, have asked me to go ahead and start building another machine for the makerspace and so today I started picking up parts for the machine and we're gonna start videotaping everything that we're gonna do here hopefully and go through the entire process to show you what it takes to build this this machine I'm not gonna give you every last little detail uh, simply because uh, I did not design the machine I don't have the rights to give you every last little detail if you wanna look at or buy a set of plans, uh, take a look at my blog site. Uh, the, the site is solsilva.com and uh, David Steele, as I said, designed the machine and you can buy a set of plans inexpensive, inexpensively from him and uh, build your own. But this will give you a good idea what it takes to put this machine together. It's not difficult, it's going to take you a little time, but I, I give uh, Mr. Steele a gold star for his efforts and his expertise in designing just this beautiful machine. We're going to, uh, I'm going to videotape a uh, close-up view of the machine here and do a little narration along with it to show you what we're going to look at and then we'll get into uh, starting the build. So here we go. So this is the uh, so Silver machine uh, backed up away so I can get into a camera view. We're going to zoom in here. We're going to go in and take a look at it. What you see on this machine is a DeWalt trim router and this is all bolted in and strapped in. And then it's run on, you can see it here, these are nothing more than gas pipe. And it runs along vertically, this is your, this is your z-axis running this way. And then crossways here would be your uh, y-axis. And then going in, let's see, this direction would be your x-axis. And so what we're going to make today is, is these pipes right here. And they're set up, we're going to zoom in here, get a good nice close view. And there's a set of rollers that ride on those gas pipes. And we're going we're gonna to take these pipes and cut them and show you how to mount them to these 2x4s on the frame. The framework of the CNC is nothing more than 1x4s uh, and 2x4s. And we'll show that farther on as we build. And I made some adjustments to the, the original design. What, what I did here was I put a, a shelf in this in this little thing in the CNC so that when you get debris that comes down in between all these slots for your clamps that falls down on your electronics. And the electronics is farther down. It's nothing more than a computer tower down here and my what I call a black box. That's all your electronics to make it run. And then of course on my desktop is the computer monitor that runs a software called Mach 3. And we'll get into that in another video. But we're going to make the uh, gas pipes today and I'll uh, show you what it takes to do them. A very, very simple process and uh, get started there. And uh, we'll show some more pictures on this video and explain in more detail. So here's video. the gas pipes and it's nothing more than half inch black uh, galvanized, uh, black pipe is what they call it, is a gas pipe. These are, each, these, each of these pipes are uh, three feet long. We're going to cut them down to the correct length for the CNC machine. Again, I'm not going to give out this information. Uh, if you need to know exactly what how big these are, you'll have to buy a set of plans because I simply am not allowed to do so. I found one thing too. We're going we're gonna to just use a, a standard pipe cutter and we take a little WD-40 on it and uh, it cuts so much nicer. I struggled with the first time uh, video not videotaping, cutting these pipes on, on the original machine here until I realized I put a little WD-40 on it and it cuts so much quicker. So we'll show you how we to set that. We've got the uh, gas pipe locked into a uh, jaw horse by Rockwell. And I absolutely love this, this tool. It is a great tool, well worth the money. Uh, something else you might want to look at for your shop. But that's uh, another story altogether. Anyway, we lock this in. And it uh, gives it a nice sturdy base to it. The gas pipe comes with a threaded threaded ends, both ends. So first off we're going to cut off the threaded ends, one end for sure, and then take our measurement and cut the other side. So we'll take a take a, a standard pipe cutter 
And we're going we're to get it started here a little bit. We'll just put it on here. Okay, let's go here. Give it a couple of turns. And keep working it down. Tightening as we go. Now there we go, a couple more turns, we should have it. There we go. And that's uh, that pipe. We're all ready to go with the, uh, the next three. Now that we've got all four pipes cut to length, the next step in the uh, build is we're going to take all four pipes and drill three holes in them. Two, two of the pipes, the holes are four inches from the ends and one in the center, and the other two are three inches from each end and one in the center. We'll drill this out of my drill press, which I've got set up already with the uh, correct bit for the... What's going to go in there is a threaded rod, and we'll, we'll see that in the next step, uh, how that gets mounted. But we have to drill the holes through each pipe, make sure they're all centered, lined up correctly, and we'll drill those out next. step in the bill we're going to take a threaded rod and we're going to cut uh, six pieces five and a quarter inches long for the x-axis uh, gas pipe mounts so we'll cut these uh, we'll clamp these again in my jaw horse or any vice will do and take a standard hacksaw and and cut them off to length what I did to mark these simplest way to mark these is just take a piece of uh, I took a piece of painters tape and marked it off and uh, then we know exactly on the edge of that tape where exactly where to cut. Otherwise, you can't mark it with a marker. But uh, we'll go ahead and cut these with a, a hacksaw, and then we'll be ready to go with uh, the next step. Now that I've got all six rods cut to length, I'm going to show you how to assemble them into the tubes that we had drilled out earlier. Okay, this is the, uh, this is the assembled tube and threaded rods already. This is what we're going to end up making. And I'll show you how to put this together. What it is, is nothing more than the tube we had drilled out earlier. And we're going to take this tube, and we're going to, and we'll take one of the threaded rods, and we're going to take a nut and slide it into the end and come, come all the way up and then feed it in. So we're going to do that right here. We'll take a nut. Let me uh, get a closer view here. Okay. Okay, now that I got the uh, camera adjusted a little better. This is the, uh, one of the tubes. And right there you can see the, the hole, one of the holes we drilled in the, the uh, pipes earlier. We're going to take a nut. So there, there's, we're going to take one of these nuts. And we're just going to shove it in the end. Then I'm going to take, uh, let me think what I've got here, take a pencil and I'm just going to shove this in until that nut lines up with the hole. Oh, just about got it. There we go. Now, put the pencil in the hole, get our threads kind of lined up in there. Let me see what I can get here. Oh, there we go, that looks pretty good. Then take one of our threaded rods. Take one of my threaded rods. I put a nut on the end just so I don't get it started. But I'm going to take this, as you can see, and, then, and I should have mentioned this earlier, we, we drilled these holes only to, through one side. We didn't go all the way through the tube. You're getting all the way through the pipe. Anyway, we'll take this, we'll take this threaded rod and stick it in our hole. And if you're real careful, you can line it up with the nut that's sitting in the bottom. 
and we'll give her a twist here and see if we can get her started. No, no, we didn't get her there yet. Let's try this again. I've got to shove it in again. Usually it takes a couple tries. Oh, too far. There we go, there we go. And yeah, we'll get it lined up again. Try it, and try it again. Put this down inside. And it's going to spin the nut. I don't think we're there yet. It's going to spin the nut a little bit when we start going in here. But you put pressure on the rod. There we go. Put pressure on the rod. And that nut will start threading in there. Oh, there we go. Feels good. And we'll get it started. And then we'll take, take, the, take the threaded rod and pull it toward you. And keep spinning. And it'll, it'll set right in there, just like that. And there we go. So then we have one of those threaded rods, just like I showed you our earlier one. We'll take a wrench. Tighten it up, and we're ready to rock and roll. There it goes. So then we'll put on the uh, the other rods, and these uh, these uh, tubes will be ready to go. Now that we've got the uh, pipes done, uh, the next step we're going to take uh, standard two by fours, and we're going to cut them the same length as the pipes, and we're going to drill them out with a series of three holes again, four inches from the end, and one in the center, all the way through. So we'll set this up on the drill press and uh, show you how that's done. Okay, now that we got uh, the 2 by 4s drilled all the way through this direction, this direction, all the way through the boards, we're going to take the uh, tubing that we had originally put together with the uh, threaded rods. I'm going to slide those into the holes, hopefully, with our washers. There we go. Flip it over. Put some more washers on our the other ends. Oh, get her started there. There we go. And then we'll take a crescent wrench or a small wrench here and tighten up our nuts. In order to get those slid in correctly, I had to take the, uh, the threaded rods that were tightened in here. I had to loosen them up a little bit, give them a little more play. And then we'll tighten these back up. extra nut that I put in here on the shaft and this will help us later on when we're adjusting the height of these rods for uh, alignment when we get the CNC machine up and running. Okay here's the, uh, the setup again for the uh, this would be the x-axis rails and uh, the gas pipe that we just put together. I want to zoom in here, come in a bit closer, and uh, show you what had happened. What I did here, right there, I put a double nut. Let's see if we can zoom in. There we go. We put a double nut in here, so that this is this rod comes up through, all the way up through this two by four, into this gas pipe. And there's a nut, like we said. We put a nut on the inside, and then this nut here holds the threaded rod to the gas pipe. This nut here is so that we can adjust this. Let me back it up a little bit. There we go. We can adjust this height of this rod up and down. And this will help us a lot when we want to do alignment for the uh, setup on the CNC to get our bit to cut perfectly flat all the way across our, our table. 
And the original one I had here, I had a heck of a time doing that simply because this nut here was recessed. And the only reason it was recessed was that it's so that you could take the CNC machine and set it down on a flat work table without a stand. And if I had known that from the start, if I had realized that, I would have done it just like this. It'll be so much easier setting up the machine to uh, zero out the table for the bit and it'll be a lot quicker, a lot better alignment on it. So that's where we're at. And uh, we'll, we'll continue on in uh, part two of the video and uh, go from there.